In this video, I'd like to talk about pressure drop in reactors. So write that down, pressure drop. So, so far we've been talk, we've been assuming that the reactor problems we've been solving don't have a pressure drop. And if you have a, a liquid, that's probably a pretty good assumption. But if you have a gas, then you're your gas, in gas phase, the concentration of your reacting species is proportional to the total pressure drop. So normally you need to account for it. And so I wanted to go through how you would do that, like how you would add the pressure drop into your equations that you've already been solving. And then also on the homework there, it, nor, so normally when you have a pressure drop, you end up with two coupled ODEs. So you would use a solver either MATLAB or polymath or whatever you want to use. And, but on the homework, it asks for you to get an analytical solution with the pressure drop. And so I'm going to show you how you would do that as well. So anyway, let's just start for, with a, a problem because I think the easiest way to see how to add the pressure drop is to just do a problem and see how it's added in. Because the, the way we've been writing the equations We've already been including the term for the pressure drop for the most part, but then you say that it's equal to one if there's no pressure drop, so it just goes away. So first of all, let's say that we have the following reaction. So 2A to B plus C. Let's say it's second order and there's a PBR. And so the first thing we want to do is write the mole balance for a packed bed reactor. So the, these problems are pretty much set up the same every time. It's the mole balance, rate loss, stoichiometry, and then combine and solve however you, however you whatever, with whatever method you want to use to solve the equations. So anyway, the mole balance for a packed bed reactor is Fa0 dx dw is equal to minus Ra prime. And then just one thing to keep in mind is we have to use the differential form of the mole balance if we have a pressure drop. Or if, you, or if it's not isothermal, then you also have to use the differential form. And so, the, so just keep that in mind. So then the next thing we write the rate law. And we know it's second order, so the rate is K C A squared. And then we can do the stoichiometry. C A is equal to C A naught one minus X over one plus epsilon X P over P naught, T naught, oops, over T. So this is what I was talking about, that we've already been writing equations with the pressure drop. It's just that we've been saying, well, if there's no pressure drop, then P over P naught is equal to one. So then this is one, so it just goes away. And then in this case, we're also saying, okay, this is isothermal, so the T naught over T is equal to one. So then we just do the same thing we've done. We put that into there, that into there. And doing that, we get dx over dw is equal to k c a naught over V naught, one minus X over one plus epsilon X squared, P over P naught squared. So I skipped basically all the algebra steps. I'm assuming by this point, you know how to go from these equations to this. And also I, I got, I, I, 
substitute it in. So for F A naught, I said F A naught is equal to C A naught V naught. And I also assumed isothermal so the T over T naught went away. So then looking at this equation, we can see right away that dx dw is a function of x and p. And so in order to solve this equation, we need to find p as a function of w. So we need p as a function of w. So basically we need a relation of the pressure drop to the catalyst weight. And I'm going to erase some stuff real quick. So we can find this relationship, the relationship of the pressure to the catalyst weight by using the Ergun equation. And the Ergun equation is, is used to calculate pressure drops in packed porous beds. So, And this equation is dp dz, so pressure and z is the length of the packed bed, or the, the distance down the packed bed, minus g. g is the superficial mass velocity. Rho, rho is the density of the gas. gc is a conversion factor. dp, which is the diameter of the particle. 1 minus phi, phi is the porosity over phi cube. And then 150, 1 minus phi, nu. And nu is the viscosity of the gas in the bed. dp plus 1.75 g. So then, first of all, this equation is as a function of z, and we need it as a function of w. So we need to figure out how to, we still need to figure out how to relate pressure to w, but we also want to significantly simplify this equation. So the only thing really changing is rho. Everything else is a constant that depends only on the properties of your packed bed and on the entrance conditions. So if we assume that this is steady state, then we can say that rho naught v naught is equal to rho v. And then we can say that rho is equal to rho naught v naught over v. And then we can also say that we know that v is equal to v naught p naught over p t over t naught ft over f ft naught. And if you remember, we derived this equation in, uh, so I derived this equation in the video for the changing volume or volumetric flow rate. And this is also in chapter three of the textbook. So then we know that v over v naught is basically equal to this. So then we can plug that into there, and we can say that rho is equal to rho naught p over p naught t naught over t ft over ft naught. So then we can take this rho and put it in there. And if we do that, you'll see that we end up with rho naught here. And so the rho naught include and all of this stuff basically becomes a constant. So we can just say that that's beta naught. So I'm just going to erase some stuff over here real quick. So then if we do that, we get the dp dz is equal to beta naught, this is negative, p over p naught, t naught over t, ft 
over ft naught. And so in order to relate this to w, we need to write an equation where we have the weight and we also have z. So we know that the weight in the packed bed is equal to 1 minus phi, which is the volume of the solids, multiplied by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the length, multiplied by the density of the solids. So then if we solve this for z, we get z equals w over 1 minus phi ac rho c. And then we can plug that into there. If we do that, we get dp over d w over 1 minus phi ac rho c. And this is equal to the beta, etc. And so then if we, so all of this stuff is constant, so we can pull that out of the derivative. And so if we do that, we get d p d w is equal to minus beta over 1 minus phi ac rho c p over p naught t naught over t ft over ft naught. Now I'm going to erase some stuff real quick. So what we can do at this point is we can define another constant, which is this stuff. So then we can say that alpha, we're going to call this constant alpha. So alpha is equal to 2 beta naught over a c rho c multiplied by 1 minus phi p naught. And then we also want to say that y is equal to p over p naught. And so then if we plug this stuff in, then we get dp over dw is equal to minus alpha over 2, t over t naught, p naught over p over p naught, ft over ft naught. And then we already said that this p over p naught is equal to y. So we want to divide this p naught over and pull it into the derivative. So then this ends up, this, you get p over p naught in the derivative. So then if you do that, you get dy over dw is equal to minus alpha over 2y t over t naught ft over ft naught. Writing your equations in terms of the molar flow rate, this is the form of the equation you would want to use. But I'm going to take this a step further and also write it in terms of concentration. So then if you're writing your equations in the, in the form of concentration, then you can also use this equation. So to do that, we know that f of t is equal to f t naught plus f a naught delta x. And then if we pull the f t naught out, we get f t naught 1 plus f a naught over f t naught delta x. And then we want to divide the f t naught over, so we get that basically. So f t over f t naught is equal to 1 plus. And then we also know that this f a naught over f t naught, that's the, that, so this is y a naught delta, and that equal, that is, that's what we've been calling epsilon. So I'm going to rewrite that. So this is 1 plus epsilon x. 
and then you can plug that into there. dy dw is equal to minus alpha over 2y 1 plus epsilon x t over t naught. So then this is the form you would use if you're working in terms of conversion. So now, so normally, let me just write down the original differential equation real quick that we were looking at. So the differential equation that we derived originally with this problem was, was dx dw, and this was the mole balance, equals k c a naught or b naught 1 minus x over 1 plus epsilon x squared p over p naught squared. So then this would be, so the two differential equations you would solve would be this one and this one. And the reason why is because you're in this equation you're working in terms of conversion so you'd want to use this equation but if this equation was written in terms of molar flow rates then you would use this one. So, and normally you would need a some sort of ODE solver like MATLAB or Polymath to solve these numerically, but the homework assignment asks you to get an analytical solution for this, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. So this is actually really simple. First of all, we're, we have, we're assuming it's isothermal, so this T over T naught is equal to 1. And, but I mean, you can see what's coming. Like when we start looking at reactors that aren't isothermal and you have to account for that, then you can see that it, it's really just, we're still using the same equations, you're just keeping an additional term. And so that's why I like to write these every time, because if, you were used to just writing this equation without the t over t naught, then I don't know, at least for me, it would it seems like it would get confusing when you start adding these terms because then you're not really sure where they came from where they come from. So if we want to get but for now we're saying that's one. So we have this equation dy dw is equal to minus alpha over two y 1 plus epsilon x. So the way we can get an analytical solution to this problem, to this equation, is we can go here and we can say that epsilon is equal to 0. dy dw is equal to minus alpha over 2y. So then you can separate and integrate and so when so you're going to integrate from y equals 1 at p equal p naught and that's at w equals 0 and if you do that you end up with y is equal to 1 minus alpha w to the 1 half so then you would put this into there because you know that this p over p naught is equal to y so you can just plug that into there and then you can just solve this equation as normal so you would just separate and integrate this.